Good morning, everybody. Backstage, beautiful backstage audience. Folks checking in from all over the world. Good morning to you guys. Hey there. Good. It looks like you guys can see me and hear me. Hope you guys are healthy, happy, taking good care of yourselves. Um, it is so fun to connect with you guys like this after engaging with you guys for years uh, with the articles. Uh, it was such a joy welcoming a lot of you guys to come audit uh, my master class for free last week. Those of you that are watching, you're also invited to attend a free audit and uh, come and watch the breakthroughs in the class. We'll tell you more about that later. But uh, yeah, I just just want to just want to say hi to everybody and uh, have a little bit of a check in. So I am very excited to be doing this again this week. I'm excited to be doing more of these with you guys and checking in. One of the one of the really important things and fun things that we're doing with the studio are the pre-class, call them accountability groups, but it's just really an opportunity for everyone just to check in with each other, to sort of see what's going on. Is it busy? Which it really is, you guys. It's really busy out there. How are you doing personally? How are you all handling this? And we're going we're gonna to talk about some really exciting stuff today. So one, I want to reiterate to you guys, just so you know, it's busy out there. It's really busy for actors. And it's so exciting because the way to get a hold of things is easier than it ever was. Uh, to build relationships with major writers, directors, and producers. Uh, to strategize, to lay claim to major feature film and TV roles. So those of you joining, those of you that don't know me, my name is Joseph Perlman. I'm in Los Angeles. I'm an acting coach. I have a school, Perlman Acting Academy. We work with beginners, celebrities, working professionals. We help actors launch their careers faster and reach Oscar potential on set. Our classes are an extension of the private coaching. Uh, we work on currently casting major film and TV auditions until you have a breakthrough every time. And we help you to guarantee a win in the audition room. And you're welcome to learn more uh, on our website, www.josephperlman.com. -E and you're all invited to attend a free audit in one of our classes, including my master class, which is a small group of our celebrity and series lead level actors getting a workout every week. So I look forward to seeing you guys there and, and really getting into how we sort of craft these performances and, and guarantee a win in the audition room. So this is gonna be separated into two parts, you guys. This is gonna be, one, how do you guarantee a win? Because it's possible to guarantee a win with your acting choices. And two, how to technically put together a winning taped audition. Then we're going to have a discussion, a really fun discussion that I love having with the actors every week about what makes for dangerous acting. What is dangerous acting? What are the performances that are like teetering on the edge, on the brink, the performances that take your breath away? I think of actors like Joaquin Phoenix and Laura Linney as dangerous actors. Um, danger doesn't mean, you know, that it's big. It's just, we're going we're gonna to break it down and talk about what are the elements of a dangerous performance. They're the performances that take your breath away. They can't be ignored. It's the ones that get you the role. It's the ones that get you the career. There was a beautiful story. Trying to remember it because I want to I want to do it justice. Ben Kingsley talked about when he was younger, he would sneak in to the Royal Shakespeare Company when he was a kid. And he would he would go up front and he would watch some of the performances. I think it was Laurence Olivier, and he would describe it like it being so intense, he felt at any moment he could pass out. There were moments I was watching Breaking Bad years ago where I felt that. And you guys know what I'm talking about. It's like 
when you're watching performances and it's like your heart is beating in a very scary way that you feel like you might just black out. And I'm excited to, to have that conversation. So let's ground, let's ground ourselves in this discussion right now. So let's, I, I put this under the category, getting real. So getting real. One, it's busy out there. Everybody's busy. Even though a lot of production might be paused or stopped, that doesn't mean writer's rooms are still packed. Um, auditions are going out like crazy. Those of you that watched the video I did last week, one of the reps that I work with, one of the management companies sent out 106 taped auditions about a week ago. So it's really, really busy. And, you know, we're all in the same boat. Everybody's scared. Nobody knows what's going on. So it's important to know that it's not enough to be good. You have to be great. Okay. One of the things that I help, I'm helping you guys do in these videos and I help my clients do is making getting in the room, getting the audition, the easy part. I want to help you to compete for the role, not the audition. Every other actor is just struggling to get the audition. What if that could be easy to compete for the role, not the audition? And to do that, it's really important that you have your you know what together, that you really have it together as an actor. It's a great time to see what you're made of right now. A really, really good time to see what you're made of. And it's important to know, and one of, one of my really good friends, Annie Chang, who's a series lead level actor, producer, one of the teachers at my studio, said something really beautiful last week in one of her classes. She said, don't let your need to be liked or accepted get in the way of doing your best work or getting your career off the ground. This is really important. I'm going to say it again. Don't let your need to be liked or accepted get in the way of doing your best work. Okay, so again, getting in the room can really be the easy part. The real question is, is your SHIT together? Do you know, do you have it together? Are you at your Olympic best? This is the Olympics. Okay, and your Olympic best is not someone, someone else's to give back to you. It's a part of all of you. Okay, and most of it is your personality. And can you really let it burst through in the moments that most matter? So. One of my favorite philosophers, Alan Watts, said something. I love this quote. Don't let anybody steal your watch and sell it back to you. You guys already have what it takes to be great. It's your personality. Okay? 90% of the performance is the personality of the actor. We'll talk about that again. And then again, everyone's scared. So let's all take a collective breath together and realize Nobody is above you, okay? Casting directors are not above you. Writers, directors, and producers are not above you. We are all in the same boat. And if it's not obvious now, you know, I don't know when it's going to be obvious. Um, let's also get real about this too. Casting directors are an incredible alliance to have. They have a very important part in the process, but they don't make the final casting decisions, okay? That's the job of production. Casting might bring a group of a thousand or a hundred or fifty down to a smaller group and then show it to production. Production is making final decisions. So in addition to thinking about connecting with and building relations with relationships with casting directors, what is really potentially more important are the relationships that you're building with major writers and directors and producers and studio heads, et cetera. I think you've heard of the, the concept of a general meeting. A general meeting is a meeting where you're sitting down with casting, but it's not just casting. General meetings can be a general meeting with a production company, uh, a studio executive, a network head, a writer, a director, and guess what? In these meetings, no acting is taking place. It's like someone's just getting to know who you are and you're getting to know who they are. And we'll talk about that more um, as we move through this. So yeah, casting directors don't make the final casting decisions. That's the job of production. So they're an important alliance casting directors, but they're not jangling the keys to your salvation. They're not 
you know, they're not the gatekeepers to your success. This is the moment for you. Are you willing to be brave? And I think you guys are from what I've seen, from what I've seen, uh, those of you that have come to watch class, the actors I'm currently working with, I really do feel like you guys are um, really, you know, taking this moment to be brave. One of my wonderful friends, actors that I work with, who I really think is listening to this, his name is Eugene Simon. Eugene, if you're out there, hey, I'm really happy you're here. Eugene uh, was six seasons on Game of Thrones, and he said something really beautiful. Eugene said, Joseph, it, as you move forward in your career, he said, it doesn't get easier, you just get braver. I love that. It doesn't get easier, you just get braver. So Eugene, if you're out there, I'm really happy uh, you're, you're a part of this uh, work today. And I look forward to seeing you later in Masterclass. Um, and Eugene also said something about that your job in an audition is to stand out without screaming, okay? Your job in the audition is to stand out without screaming. It's not to back off. It's not to play it safe. It's not to fit in. It's not to please a casting director or the uninterested masses. It's to stand out. You think of great musicians, um, like thinking like people like Jack White as a musician. You think someone like that would be afraid to stand out and sort of do his version? No, you got to think about it like that. Yeah. Rule number one of the audition is this. You guys ready for it? Rule number one. I tell this to all the actors I work with, and it's really important. It's a really neat sort of umbrella for all auditions. Rule number one, don't guess what you think they are looking for. Assume you are who they're looking for and bring yourself to the piece with a brave choice, okay? With a brave, brave choice. Why should we not guess what they're looking for? Many reasons. They don't know what they're looking for. They have no idea. That's why they're doing this to begin with. As I mentioned in the video last week, um, We've had over 100 actors booking major roles this year, over 20, like over 20 clients booking series lead level work. And the consistent feedback from the production company, when the actors executed those phenomenally brave choices was, wow, something to the effect of, thank you for being the only one willing to take a risk. Or it wasn't at all what we were looking for, it was better. Yeah, so don't back off, don't play it safe. In all auditions, but especially with regards to the video auditions that we're all putting together today and the tapes, including the one I'm doing right now. Uh, in fact, all of the meetings that you're watching, the Zoom meetings could benefit from this. You have so much less time to engage people, okay? That's really important, you, you, you have seconds you, you, you've always had seconds, but now it's even more. You have seconds to engage people and you have to have major impact right up front, okay? One of the things that I tell the actors in the classes is the difference between great, good and great is this little bit extra. And it's that little bit extra bravery. And I think Eugene, if you're listening, you would agree with me. And, and a lot of the folks that we work with, uh, you know, would agree. It's that little bit extra and it's, and it's bravery. It's possible to guarantee a win every time. I'm going to say that again. It is possible to guarantee a win every time you audition if you know how to do it. And what are those, what am I referring to with those wins? Well, there's threefold. One, obviously, you book the role, you win the role, you get that. Two, another win is getting a callback a producer session, furthering it, can, you know, moving forward in the process. And then the other win is sometimes people say you book the room, but I, I like to think of it like this, is the people that saw you work fell in love with you and will bring you back in over and over again until you book something. Does that make sense? It was not a match for whatever reason that was out of your control, but your work was so great. Um, that somebody falls in love with you. And it brings me to, it brings me to a point I want to share. Philip Seymour Hoffman was 
was asked in an interview, do you have any advice for, for newer actors? And he said, yeah, it, it's a, it was a beautiful uh, video. And it was, he said, yeah, if you're in a situation where you're acting in a room that someone has paid rent for, you have the opportunity to do the best acting you can possibly do. In other words, to be the best at your job. Um, and he said, if you do that consistently, something will ultimately transpire. And that is the truest thing. Uh, that is the truest thing. Absolutely, something will transpire. And if you don't do a good job, it's just like someone that shows up and you know, doesn't do their job well. Do you know what I mean? So you, you have that up, you have that possibility. So book the role, you get a call back, further the process, or somebody falls in love with you. You guys, what is the secret ingredient? It's your personality. Those of you that have been reading my articles, the backstage, backstage articles over the year, I talk about personality all the time. Your personality is your secret weapon. Okay, what does that mean? It's a, it's a scary prospect, this whole personality thing, for actors hoping to completely disappear and hide within the role. I'm not talking about, you're not playing yourself, but you need to realize that the humanity, you cannot act or create the humanity in the soul. That humanity is your own. I think with, with some training that is less than, there's a lot of effort and emphasis placed on escaping the immediacy of danger and the immediacy of actually facing ourselves in the moment. A common sentiment among actors is the feeling that I'm not enough or I'm not interesting enough as ourselves. So we gravitate towards the safety of warm and fuzzy techniques or confusing methods that allow us to create a tangled web away from ourselves in the high stakes of performing. The goal of an actor is to reflect an audience's own humanity, for someone to catch an attitude I think it was Fred Rogers that said, one of the most beautiful things you can do in life is for someone to catch an attitude that something is fun. How do you catch an attitude that something is fun? You're lit up with fun. That's how someone's gonna catch an attitude. Maya Angelou said, people don't remember what you, fe what you do. They remember how you make them feel. If you can get people to feel something, and how are you going to get people to feel something? It's you that has to feel something. So to do that, to reflect the audience's own humanity, you have to use your own. You can't create the soul of the character. It's your own. One of my favorite quotes is from Diana Vreeland, former editor of Vogue. Uh, she discovered incredible people like Barbara Streisand, Angelica Houston. And I love this quote so much is, she said, show others what they didn't know they wanted yet. That's your job, you guys, to show others what they didn't know they wanted yet. Really important. And then one of my other favorite quotes from, is from Melissa Bruder. She said, the person you are is a hundred times more interesting than the greatest actor you could ever hope to be or the greatest performance you could ever create. And again, we're not playing ourselves, but we're finding ways to relate and identifying. We're asking ourselves, under what conditions would it be possible to do that? Under what conditions would it be possible to relate that? You guys, we're all human animals. We're capable of relating to an infinite amount of things that we haven't experienced if you really let yourself you know, go into the red mist with it. So, yeah. Your personality is your secret weapon. And it's the tip that you leave. We talk about it all the time, leaving a tip. You hear about leaving a tip, of course, in a restaurant, but the difference between good and great is this little bit extra. And that little bit extra is that tip of personality, that thumbprint. It was a story some years ago, Billy Crystal told me about back in the 80s, getting his comedy career off the ground. And, and, and I'm... There's a lot of, there's some really fun background and then we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of how to guarantee a win on the audition. And you guys can come watch the actors in the masterclass for free if you want to. Uh, Billy Crystal said in the 80s, he had a big show coming up and he was very excited because a big producer was going to be there. Uh, this man was going to be in the audience and it, it meant it could really mean a big break in his career. So he did the show. It went well. Uh, the audience loved it. Billy was so excited. He was waiting in the, in the dressing room and there was a knock on the door. 
Billy opened it. It was the producer. And he said, hey, come on in. Um, thanks for coming. What did you think? And the producer said, wow, they, they really loved it. It was fun to be there, but it just, I didn't connect with it. It wasn't for me. And I think Billy was a little heartbroken. And this producer told Billy, he said, listen, Billy, I didn't get a sense of who you were. I, I heard the jokes. Um, they were funny, but I didn't feel like I knew, I didn't feel like I got to know a whole person. He said, you didn't leave a tip. Leaving a tip. We know the people that have left a tip in our lives. We can maybe count them on one hand. We, we have a sense of them in our heart. We, the people that really leave an imprint of their personality. So I love describing it like that. I love the way he described it was, um, you know, leaving a tip. Now, some of you guys, we talk about audition nerves, okay? Well, I, I don't know how prevalent they are in the, in the taped auditions, which is what we're doing right and left these days, taped auditions. But the answer to audition nerves is not pretending they don't exist or hearing weird comments like use them. That's, you know what, that's BS. The goal is to outfund them by burning through the fog of nerves, to displace them, being under the influence of emotions that burn hotter than the nerves. And then they become non-existent. Displace them. Huge casting director note and production note. Okay, remember, casting directors don't make final casting decisions. So, so don't be solely focused on building relationships with casting directors. Here's this huge note. Uh, after auditions, Joseph, I can, I, I can always pull an actor back, but I can never pull something out I didn't see to begin with. I'm going to say that again because it's really important. I want to give you guys permission to not play it safe, to not to not back off, to not dull the blade of the dull the edge of the blade. I can always pull an actor back, but I could never pull something out I didn't see to begin with. And I and I really hope that sets you guys up with um, the sort of permission to not sort of edit your you know your best choices. I'm going to share something else with you guys right now. And I know Eugene Simon, if you're listening. Uh, and hopefully you'll be in class tonight um, to talk a little bit about what I'm talking about. So, yeah. Great acting preparation is like a properly packed parachute, which prevents the skydiver from falling to his or her death. Though scared for your life, you must bravely walk into an audition room, do an audition tape, slate, have an interview, and then dive into your piece. All you do is pull the ripcord and let the parachute do the work, trusting you've packed it properly, okay? When, you, when you're acting, there's no place for technique at that point. In the audition room, this translates to leaving yourself alone and letting that parachute of preparation guide you. As I mentioned in the video last week, you guys, by the time something's currently casting, okay, whether it was last year or whether it's now, it's often too late to meaningfully compete if you don't have pre-existing relationships before with the production company. So there's three things that you need to think about in terms of your strategy, your strategy session is what's my pre-game? How am I going to build relationships miles before it ever gets to casting? Build relationships in really heartfelt, meaningful ways. Not where people feel like you want something, but where people feel like they know you as a person, as a human being. And there's a right way through that. And I talk about it a bit in the last video. Delivering the best acting you can possibly deliver the day of or on that video. And then three is having a really solid post game, is realizing that it is your job with or without your reps, depending to follow up on those really important ones. Um, so the follow-up game is really important as well. And yeah, so again, I, I mentioned this before, but getting in the room should be the easy part if you're at your Olympic best, okay? If you're truly great. More important is having your you-know-what together, having your acting together, being at your Olympic best. Because again, I've said this a lot, you guys, it's busy. Um, some of the diversity showcases, the ABC, NBC diversity showcases are still happening. It's always been a self-tape first scenario with those. So it's just an example 
of things that are still going on. All right. Ready to get into what makes for a guaranteed win? Here we go. Great actors know the work is great because they feel it. You feel it, you guys. Not because some guru like tells you what they think or gives you a suggestion for what they, you should do or, or because you watch your performance on playback in an acting class. I don't know if you know this, but not every actor should be watching their playback. It can be downright toxic to watch playback. Actors like Meryl Streep, Javier Bardem, Reese Witherspoon, on and on, Johnny Depp, know to never watch their playback, okay? If you can't look at yourself like an editor, if you can't get over certain things, don't do it because it could shut you down. It could shut your best impulses down. I'm not saying never watch yourself, but use it as a tool. Not every single week in class you spend half the class and watch playback. It can turn into a colossal waste of time and be toxic for some actors. So great actors know the work is great because they feel it. And these are the things that you feel when it's great. So you own it. No one can, no one can take that from you. Number one, if it's not fun, it's not working. These are binary. You don't have to think to answer this question. So once you're finished with an acting performance, if it's not fun, it's not working. Now, I don't mean like a kid's birthday party fun with balloons. I'm talking about maybe I climbed Everest and I feel like I'm going to die, but every pore in my body is saying F yes. Do you know what I'm saying? So fun can be cathartic, invigorated, alive, that kind of fun. And you guys know what, what I'm talking about. Number two, great acting should feel effortless. Easy, effortless. After all the work is over, what if your best acting felt as easy as if you were playing yourself, would you trust it? And Eugene Simon, if you're listening, you know that it can be terrifying to, to, to feel that easiness because, you know, I think a lot of actors expect every moment to be like birthing a calf. Sorry for the horrible image, but every moment to be like squeezing something out. No, you guys, um, great acting should feel effortless after all the work is over. Um, there's nothing you have to do if the work is strong. Actors like Philip Seymour Hoffman talked about it all the time. He said, after my interview in Movie Maker Magazine, I think it was in, uh, I can't remember the year, but he talked about the work being so strong that when he got to set, he didn't do anything. He didn't alter himself, change himself. He didn't have to because the work strong. Acting training technique, once it's been planted in your body, should be balled up and chucked out the window. Otherwise, the work is going to smell like the training, and we don't want that. We want, it, we want it free of that. Number three, you should be having impact, okay? How does it feel? Did I have impact? Was I affecting change? Michael J. Fox talks about it like in every scene, you want to find an opportunity to surprise your partner, the people that you're acting with. And number four, your best acting should feel like you, not like you're playing yourself, but like your version of it. So I'm going to review this right now. Number one, great acting should feel fun, cathartic, empowered, invigorated fun. Two, it should feel effortless, easy, like I wasn't doing any work. Four, you should have impact. You should be affecting change. Uh, three, you should have impact, affect change. And four, it should feel like you, your version of it. So many folks, actors, unfortunately, make the mistake of playing their idea of a character of trying to solve the problem of playing the character in their head or writing some backstory. You can, there's nothing wrong with backstory, but you're never going to solve the problem of how to play her or him in your head. It has to be discovered through imagination and put into your experience. Um, which, you know, which reminds me of that beautiful Stella Adler quote I shared with you guys last week. And I want to share it again. She said, facts, F-A-C-T-S, facts, are death to the actor until they are fed through imagination and become experience. Facts are death to the actor until they're fed through imagination and become experience. And that's so cool. For me, that's just sort of like permission to never have to worry about solving major problems in your head. My favorite Einstein quote, as some of you guys know, is, 
You can't solve a problem from the same level of consciousness that created it. That's what every other actor is going to do. And I'll let you in on another secret too. What every other actor is doing is they're thinking that their character description and the scene description and all the things it says in the screen uh, on, the, on the text, they think it's their acting instructions, but it's not. They're not your acting instructions at all. And in fact, it's going to lead to what everybody else is going to do, to the obvious choice, okay? What is your character description, you guys? Your character descriptions on your sides, my gosh, they're written by breakdown services. They're written by casting. They're, they're, help, they're to help you understand the world of the piece. And by no means are they ever your acting. It's not for you to obey. Does that make sense? We're not there to ignore that. I'm not telling you to ignore the stage directions and the, um, and the character descriptions. They're just not your marching orders, okay? It represents a writer's pitch, what's on the page. It's like, here, producer, here's sort of a, a glimpse of what could be, okay? So that, that, that's really important. Marlon Brando said something beautiful. He said, find a way to do it that's never been done before. That's what you're trying to do, not the obvious choice. You got to look for the trap, the obvious choice. Um, find a way to do it that's never been done before. Stop the movement of the popcorn to the mouth. Get them to stop chewing. It's really, it's a really great thing to think. Get them to stop chewing. And one of the things that everybody's doing, and the way to stand out is that what everybody's doing, and I, I think, unfortunately, I think there's certain training only goes so far, but when in life do we say everything that we feel and everything that we mean? When in life do we verbalize every single thing we feel all the time? We don't a lot of the time. Why are we making acting choices based on what the text is doing? Because the text is already doing that. Does that make sense? In life, as Martin Landau said, my job as an actor is the 90% that isn't in the text, is what do we mean? What do we feel? So if you can, if you can kind of wrap yourself around that, it's going to be an amazing ride of discovery and not pre-planning things in your head. But I love what Brando said, is permission to, to like do it in a way that's never been done before. Get them to stop chewing. Stop the movement of the popcorn to the mouth. Just absolutely love that. Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit, get it, the, 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 the technical aspects of an audition are not that hard. It's just going to be a little, the first time you do it, it's going to feel like you're sort of like um, playing multiple instruments at once. But once you get the hang of it, it, you know, it's really, it's really easy. One of the reasons why I have this backdrop is to show folks that sort of like, this is, this is sort of the look and feel um, of, of a Zoom or a taped audition, but we'll, we'll get into those specifics in a little bit. I want to share with you a beautiful quote from one of my favorite actors who is a dangerous actor. I consider him to be dangerous. And again, danger has nothing to do with your volume or how big you are. It's making emotional choices that are not obvious, um, being under the influence of dangerous emotions. And Joaquin Phoenix said this, and you know, it, it, they're his words. He said, quote, I will get into a rut in a certain way that I'll say a line to the point where you just have to shake the bitch up and find something else because there's no energy and there's no life to it. I'm now trying to say what at one point I had said with some feeling, but now I'm just trying to copy it. It doesn't have anything behind it. So I told Paul Thomas Anderson this, and I've told it to every director I've worked with recently. I'm actively consciously going to do very bad things with my choices in an attempt to take any pressure off of it, as if to say, I don't know what it's going to be. If that doesn't give you permission to go in other directions with your choices, I don't know what, you know, I don't know what will. Joaquin Phoenix is a master of dangerous acting. If you, one of the great films that I love one of the dangerous performances in Paul Thomas Anderson's The Master. Yes, of course, The Joker, but The Master with Philip Seymour Hoffman, Amy Adams, absolutely terrific. If you can get to the point where your audience, you know, one of the amazing things about working like this 
Uh, the classes that I teach are small, they're via Zoom, and it's the first time we're able to watch it, I'll watch other people working the way a producer would, the way a casting director would, the way a director would. We can actually see if it has impact um, versus being in person. So if your reader or the person watching the video can say, I felt that, it really felt like you put yourself in the room with me, uh, then you've won. So also with regards to your acting choices, um, one of the things, the attitude that you want to have in an audition, both in the room and especially via video, is you want to kick the reference point away from people. Great art doesn't label itself. As one of my dear friends, uh, Julie Weiss, um, an Oscar-nominated costume designer, she said, you want to create in art a ticket to talk a ticket to communicate. You don't want to give an answer. You want to pull people in with a ticket to talk. So you want to kick away the reference point as if to, ha to have an attitude approaching your auditions as if to say, hey, everybody, this is not going to go the way you think it's going to go. This is not going to be like what everybody's going to do. And that's the fun of it. In all honesty, you guys, I think now is a is a really neat time for a lot of people that I know to realize what are the things that were never really fun for them. Maybe it wasn't acting. Maybe it wasn't engaging with the industry in a certain way. Maybe it wasn't doing things that they felt put them on a lower level than another industry person. I don't know what it is, but it's a really neat time to just swipe off your desk all the stuff that you never really enjoyed and to really own that because you can have it the way that you want it right now. You've always been able to, but now it's a little bit more obvious that you can sort of have things the way that you want them right now. I'm going to loop you into another um, great story. This is Brian Cranston's story on Breaking Bad. When he first heard about that role in Breaking Bad, he was so excited by it. And he had an upcoming meeting with the creator, Vince Gilligan, who's phenomenal, uh, Better Call Saul, on and on. And Brian said, I wanted that role so badly. I wanted to go into that meeting with Vince Gilligan and I wanted to go in there and I wanted to leap. I wanted to lift my leg on that role. I wanted to leave my mark. So he saw me and nobody else to break it. And I, I absolutely love that story. And how did I do it? It's how we do it. It's we, we have, we ask about 99 questions to, to find the hook, which is like instant access to a full emotional light up. The difference between good and great, are you starting every scene emotionally lit up instead of empty, like lit up, and it's possible to light up in one second. And I really welcome you guys to come watch for free uh, in any of the classes um, through the website. I'll, I'll tell you that information later. So I love the way he described it. And and, and how do you do it with, with, with a, I had an, I have, it, it's an opinion. What's a great choice, you guys? Great choices are emotional attitudes. They're emotional opinions. It lifts somebody's head off a laptop. A great choice, okay, is the product of sort of 99 questions, emotional questions, to get to that one light up activation. How do you instant access to a full emotional light up at the beginning? And those choices cannot be ignored. Like I said, it's going to pop a head off a laptop. It's really beautiful. So I love Brian's story about lifting his leg on it and leaving his scent. It's just really, really beautiful. <clears throat> I'm going to take some questions um, in a little bit because I want to hang out with you guys. And I do want to stress the importance of that personality of showing people who you are. One of my favorite writers, poets is Shel Silverstein. Um, maybe he's one of yours as well too, but I read him to my daughter and it's really beautiful. And he said something that I want all actors to hear, especially you guys who are watching right now. He said this, underneath my outside face, there's a face that none can see. A little less smiley, a little less sure, but a whole lot more like me. And I'll read it again. Underneath my outside face, there's a face that none can see. A little less smiley, a little less sure, but a whole lot more like me. And I don't know what it is about that, but I just feel like I can take a breath 
it just like reminds me that there's, there's nothing that you guys have to do to present. There's, there's like, you have everything it takes uh, to be wonderful. Uh, your personalities are right there. Really bringing your personality out and doing this work is more about what you don't bring in the room. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this because with taped auditions, putting together a great taped audition, sometimes we feel that we're missing that human element and we can still have that human element. It's very important. I tell actors, don't slate if it doesn't say to slate. Okay. If it does say to slate, follow the instructions. Very important. If we're getting sort of, you know, basic rules here, follow all audition instructions. That's key. But why not slate if we don't have to slate? Over the years, some actors, um, uh, as their careers are sort of moving faster and faster um, and higher and higher, they're making the choice to not put a slate down. They feel like they're at another place. They think the sort of rationale is, listen, um, if they can't figure out who I am from the file extension, from the email, maybe from the agent or manager sending it in, I just don't wanna do a slate. And I think it's part of following instructions, but don't just feel just like knee jerk reaction that I have to do a slate if it doesn't say to do a slate. What may be a little bit more, well, a lot more effective is giving somebody a sense of who you are. It's really important that you don't invest in a preparation where you're being whipped up out in the hall before you walk in the room. Um, it, it, it's, it's not healthy, it's not useful. You're gonna be attached to feeling the way you felt in the hall when you walk in the room. And you're actually gonna miss the most important part of any audition. Great casting directors, people like Heidi Levitt, who I deeply respect, they always interview the person before the actor. And if you walk in, um, just sort of engage to just sort of jump in the acting. You're going to miss the interview of who you are. I want you guys to know that the people watching you are figuring out, most importantly, who you are. What are you going to be like? What are you going to be like to hang out with for six years? What are you going to be like uh, to work with? And these are the things that you need to think about with regards to that. And there are three things, again. Maybe instead of a slate, if it doesn't say to um, slate, just introduce yourself, okay? Just a little introduction because people are sussing out in that slate, in that intro, who you are as a person. And you need to establish three things. One, you guys, are you fun? Are you fun to play with? Are you someone who's going to be fun to play with and hang out with? Two, are you someone that someone else can personally like? What is it, they're thinking, what is it like in it to be around you? And lastly, that there's no desperation. Does that make sense? That there's no desperation in the room. And I said it in the beginning, don't let your want, need, or desire to be liked or accepted get in the way of your best acting or showing somebody who you really are, that inside face that Shel Silverstein was referring to. Does that make sense? Cool. Okay. I'm going to get to some questions in a second. So the other thing with regards to the taped auditions or any auditions is it's your responsibility to deliver the performance that someone's going to get on set, not the audition version of the performance. Does that make sense? That means being in the proximity of your reader the way you'd be on set, not feeling like there's some plexiglass or there's some mark you have to stand on or Stand back, lean into it. With the self-tape auditions, you can have the, when, when, I'm, when I'm coaching self-tape auditions and putting my clients on tape, I'm like right up close with them. The camera's just right in between us. But move in the same, move next to your partner, be next to your partner the same way you'd be on set. Actually to fight, to put yourself in the proximity of your partner the way you'd be on set. And also be very clear about where you see everything. Create a pic, ask yourself, how do I see it? Paint the picture of where you are at in time and, in time and space and place. And um, when you do it, talk to the eyes of your audience, not their ears. It's very important. You hear a lot of people say, well, what are your eye lines? Um, where are you placing that person? I'm gonna tell you guys something. Never place a person. Never place a human being 
You place furniture. You see a person. If you just place a person, you're going to treat them like furniture. If you ask yourself, where do I see my sister? Where do I see my brother? Then it's like you're going to see them. So don't think about placing. And this whole, this whole eye line thing, you got to know where your camera is so you can be up and out simply based on the fact that your face is accessible. Does that make sense? I want to share you another beautiful quote uh, from Robin Williams. <clears throat> if I can find it, which I will. Robin Williams said this, and he was beautiful, and I miss him quite a bit, especially now. I would, I would love to have Robin Williams around right now. Would you guys? Because that would be pretty nice. Robin Williams said this. And again, you guys, like, you know, it, this just the fact that we can hang out like this and take a breath together and sit and talk is like so beautiful to me. So thank you again for just hunkering down, hanging out, coming along on this journey. You guys are welcome, if you haven't already, to come watch one of my classes for free. Uh, actors are working on currently casting major film and TV auditions uh, until they have a breakthrough, showing them how to guarantee wins. Uh, the level of actor is incredible. People like Eugene Simon, uh, who was on Game of Thrones for six seasons and, and, and genius playing Jeffrey Rush's son, Einstein's son. Uh, other actors, one actor who is um, one of the leads in the upcoming Last Kingdom on Netflix. You can watch them get their work out. And I, and I love to, to welcome you guys into that group. Robin Williams said this, I don't know the great secrets of acting. It's like some sort of Zen concept where you finally say, okay, what you think is acting, like don't do that anymore and stop. If you just relax, listen, be in the scene, you won't have to worry about finding that one funny line or acting. If you just don't interfere with yourself, you're quite interesting. People will register your thoughts and they'll pick up on what you're going through because your face is accessible and you'll be in character. The audience will be following along. The most important thing is for an audience to follow the character through. Don't do anything and you'll be amazed how much you're doing. Like don't do anything, he said. Just don't do anything. Just talk. Every person is driven by some deep, 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 deep secret. And finding that and the other work that we do, finding that for the character gives you that which drives it through. And I just think it's beautiful. Uh, one of my clients expressed it like this. It's so hard before it's so easy. Okay? Really, the work that you guys do, it, think of like, yes, it's like a properly packed parachute. But also think about it like really strong medicine. When you emotionally connect and the work is figuring out, you guys, what it means to you to feel those things, under what conditions would it be possible to feel those things? And it's like strong medicine. It's like, it's like a medicine uh, that you put in yourself. I, I liken it to like a malaria medication. You take a malaria drug and you fly to somewhere um, where there's a risk of malaria. You get off the plane. What do you have to do to prevent from getting malaria if the medicine was strong in your body? And it's a trick question because the answer is nothing. Nothing. If the work is strong, if you are connected, it's your job to figure out how to ignite yourself to be emotionally full in the beginning instead of empty. Because that's the difference between good and great is being emotionally full instead of empty and then letting it go. Irreverently balling up the acting preparation and throwing it out the window. Acting training is like scaffolding, you guys. It's like when the building's up, the scaffolding falls off. Okay. It's not meant to be part of the final product. It's like Olympic training. An Olympic athlete trains for months, for years. The day of the race, where is the training? They're not waving their hand and showing the training. It's in their muscle memory. It's in their bones. It's in their blood memory. That's what I want to help you guys get and what I want to help you do and what I help the actors I work on do. Get to the point where you can live off the interest of it. The thing that we find after all the work, that emotional work, What's that trigger? I call it a hook. That thing you do to make it so you don't have to act anymore. 
What are the, what are the series of questions and the emotional light-ups that you plug in your body to live off the interest of the work? That's where it becomes fun to never have to worry about doing it right or doing it correctly. Okay, so now to the technical stuff because that's important too, for sure. I'm gonna show you a picture. Um, I'm gonna show you a picture. It's a sort of what I would consider to be just, just a great framing and lighting. This is sort of the full frame, so I'm gonna show it to you guys. That's one of the phenomenal actors um, that I work with and you guys can see just the lighting, uh, the backdrop, and you don't have to have professional lighting for this, you guys. You can get basic lighting, a basic ring light, uh, a pancake light. You can even get, there's some, you know, on the obvious shopping sites. Um, so one of our phenomenal actors, Andreas, and there's a little bit of a reflection there. So yeah, hopefully you guys can see. But you can, guys, you can see the framing, you can see the cropping, and you can do that at home. You see the backdrop I'm using right now, that's the same backdrop that's in that picture. Uh, it's also really important to, to know that your reader can be reading with you via Zoom. So you can have a reader that you're looking at on a monitor and recording it just like this. And so I was mentioning on some of the obvious shopping sites, you can get just basic LED lights uh, to put right in front of you. And it's important to, let me, there we go. That's what I wanted to share with you guys. So put the computer up or your, your, whatever you're filming with, whether it's a phone or your computer, put it up on a stack of books, okay? Put it up on something so the camera is slightly higher than your head. So instead about, so you could say about the top of your head is kind of fine, similar to, similar to what I have right now here. And then point it down into your eyes. Okay. And then you can take, I mean, we're just going basic here. Let's say you don't, you know, have any type of lights or whatever basic equipment you take sort of like any kind of a lamp um, light source and set it next, sort of put it next to the, the camera, the computer on, I would say straight in front of you or on whatever side of the face that you guys prefer. Don't make yourself crazy. The most important things, this is from a friend of mine, Dave Semmel, who was one of the producers of um, Homeland, American Horror, uh, sorry, Homeland, House, Madam Secretary. He said, all that matters, you guys, is like, like, like get the job done. Getting the job done means we can see you and we can hear you, okay? We can see you well and we can hear you well. And I like a good sort of medium wide crop on it. So don't make yourself crazy. I, 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 lo I love the, the thought of just getting the job done with this. Uh, keep it simple, have a solid backdrop. Uh, don't don't have things in the background. Otherwise, people's eyes are going to go to those things. Yeah. And yeah, and at first, it's sort of going to be a little bit of a, I can say a challenge. It's going to be sort of like tapping your head and rubbing your belly as you're, you know, as you're, you can do it all on your, your laptop if you want to, as you're reading with somebody. Um, and you have your backdrop and your, and your lighting kit and put that person, you know, put that person as close to you as you want, don't put them too far back. And if you haven't, I wrote an article for Backstage some years ago called 10 Tips for a Winning Taped Audition. So the technical demands of putting together a winning Zoom or taped audition, it's not that hard. That's why I focused on the important stuff in the beginning and I'm talking about the technical stuff right now. And remember what I said to really fight to put yourself in the proximity of your reader the way you'd be on set. That's very important. Don't just be standing back on some mark. Really lean into it. Really lean into your reader. And I know it's obvious, but don't look at the camera, okay? Don't look at the camera. And if it doesn't say to Slate, um, you know, sometimes thinking outside of the box can really make a huge difference. And here's an example. Let's say, you have three scenes in your audition. Instead of shooting them one, two, three, the way every actor is going to shoot them, change the order up. You want to show somebody with your acting choices a way of seeing this that they've never seen before. Because we're trying to get the note from production, not casting, from production. Wow. 
It wasn't at all what we were looking for. It was better. Thank you for showing us that our writing was better than we thought. Does that make sense? It's like that. that's what we're trying to do here. So what I would like to do is um, want to be as thorough as I possibly can with this. I'm going to show you that picture again. Uh, this wonderful actor who um, I have on tape, his name is Andreas. And that's sort of like what you're looking at, what we're trying to emulate here. And again, you guys, thank you for hunkering down. It's just like, this is like one of the coolest things we can do is to just sort of, it's amazing the level of connection we can have with each other just like this. And just taking a collective breath um, has been so, just given a lot of folks that at least we work with, a lot of hope, a boost of morale. I invite all of you guys, if you haven't, uh, to come audit from anywhere in the world. Uh, we're looping actors in from Barcelona, from South America, from Vienna, all over the world to come watch for free uh, one of my classes, including you can choose to watch the master class, series leads, celebrity level actors, people like Eugene Simon, uh, who I believe is in London right now, getting a workout on currently casting major film and TV auditions every week, um, practicing how we play not doing practicing in a practice environment. And just to know you guys, the, be and the, the best way to reach uh, out to us is through the website, which is www.josephperlman.com, P-E-A-R-L-M-A-N. Send us an email and we'd love to welcome you. You know, we'd love to welcome you guys. I wanna take some questions here. You guys, you're so welcome. Um, Nikki, you're very, very welcome. Um, LOL Productions, thank you very much. All I hope is to give you guys practicable, useful, you know, concepts that you guys can use, not theoretical, wishy-washy, you know, that's, I want to give you practicable tools uh, to succeed. Um, oh, just go to the website, my website, send us an email and you can, our, our, my studio manager will loop you into a free audit from anywhere. And it's all via Zoom. So you can take it from anywhere in the world, wherever you're at, you can join. Um, oh, you mentioned, someone said Joseph Jones. You mentioned 99 questions. Do you have a template for the 99 questions that is posted anywhere? No, because there are like a thousand questions that you can ask. It takes about 99 to find that incredible choice to guarantee that win. So come and watch and you can, you can, you can start to write them down and hear the questions um, because it depends on the actor. It's not a one size fits all thing. Uh, everybody's different. Uh, so everybody should work with everybody. And I work with everybody in a very customized way. I don't have some technique I wrap around them. I use everything that works, but I help the actors to be the creators of their own technique using some incredible uh, techniques, a lot of Michael Chekhov, but it's really just this incredible thing where we're sort of on the outer expanses of like what's new. We're just, you know, we're discovering. And one of the neat things we discover after doing all the work is that the best choices are found by forgetting everything, by forgetting the text, by forgetting the story. As Einstein said, again, you can't solve a problem using the same level of consciousness that, for, that, that created it. And I don't know who said this, but it was incredible. You think about the process of putting together uh, a taped audition, putting together um, uh, your process of acting. You think about it like putting together a puzzle where everybody's trying to put together this same puzzle and everybody can put together the puzzle. And then when it's put together, you know, it's, it's there, but the truly brilliant work is where you put the puzzle together and you work at that. And then after it's put together, you rip the puzzle up from the roots to reveal the face on the underside of the puzzle. And that is the choice that's going to guarantee that win. That's the choice that's going to connect um, online, uh, via video, or in the room, period. Let's see. Um, oh, in terms of the backdrop, it's a seamless roll. You can get them anywhere. It's just a seamless roll. Uh, I prefer white. This is sort of a light, light bluish color. You guys can sort of see. Uh, it's a seamless roll of paper up there. And you can get it anywhere. And it's really easy to get the stands to hold it. Um, so yeah, just really keep it simple. I, I do like just sort of a bright, sort of bright white backdrop. This, this color blue is very light blue. 
I also like it. Thank you very much, uh, Mizan. Uh, thank you, uh, Jambergo. Um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, and don't make yourself crazy, you guys. Like, you know, you either have headshots that work or headshots that don't work, okay? Don't waste your time reshooting, you know, if they work. I coach kids all the time. Uh, absolutely. We work with everybody here. And, oh, good question. How long do you advise an acting reel to be? Um, in the continued series of videos, it'd be fun to maybe do something on reels, but the whole concept of the reel has changed. I wrote an article on Backstage, you guys. You should check it out. It's called Creating a Badass Reel Just Got a Whole Lot Easier. And the traditional segmented reels um, is a whole lot easier. We're, we're not using those anymore, okay? A reel should be no longer than a minute and a half total, incorporating your best footage at the beginning. And think about it like this. If you're sending somebody your reel, why would you send a whole bunch of clips that have nothing to do in style to, to what you're, you're pitching for sending in? So what we're doing is I'm working with agent manager teams and we're working with the, the actors at the studio to create production relevant pieces that are relevant to the production that you're pitching, um, pitching for and submitting your reel to using a very simple uh, backdrop like this. We work with actors who are, you know, celebrity level Emmy nominated actors, and they're creating this very atypical reel. So read that article, um, creating a badass reel just got a whole lot easier. So yeah, and the last article you guys is really fun. It's called how to teleport uh, to an A-list career. So you guys know, one of my favorite quotes is from Seth Godin. And, and I love what he said. He said, effort isn't the point, impact is. If you solve a problem in three seconds or three minutes, but have the guts to share it, it's art. It's art. And if you move 10,000 pounds of granite, sorry for your calluses, but you haven't made art, at least not art that, that someone's going to connect with. And that's really true, you guys. Don't be fooled into thinking that your best work has anything to do with effort. It's all about impact. Some of the most beautiful change affecting pieces of art were written and created in a short period of time. Think about like Dylan's, Bob Dylan's Blown in the Wind was written in 10 minutes. Paul Schrader's uh, uh, screenplay for Taxi Driver was written in two weeks in his car, okay? So effort is never the point, impact is. So always think of things in terms of there, it, it, there's a simpler way to get from point A to point B. You don't have to suffer. suffer. And there's a simpler way to get to where you want to be in your career. Don't think that you have to climb the rungs of the ladder. You know, let go of all this herd mentality stuff. There's a way to teleport to that. And um, stay tuned for, you know, some really exciting uh, content as we keep hanging out like this every week. It is really a privilege, an honor, and I'm really just want to, again, uh, thank everybody at Backstage for making this possible and making it really easy um, to put these together. And I deeply appreciate you guys, as I appreciate all of you who have been reading the articles and uh, following us for so many years. And again, invite you guys to be a part of any upcoming uh, web events that we're having, a really exciting one coming up, how to teleport uh, to an A-list career. Uh, and attend a free audit in one of our classes and, and watch the breakthroughs and see how we do it. josephperlman.com, www.josephperlman.com, P-E-A-R-L-M-A-N. Send us an email and we'll get you set up. And I'll leave you guys with a little something, a little tip for you guys, something you can put in your pocket. One of the beautiful things that I do is I get to work with a lot of folks who are non-actors. I work with places like Doctors Without Borders, World Health Organization, um, helping healthcare leaders, um, people uh, presenting TED Talks. And the one thing I've found that is true is that your words become your reality. Your emotional words become your reality. So all the acting work that we do is talked out loud. Again, resist the temptation to think it through or to write it down. And your words have so much power, you guys. Um, don't be careful with them. Be brave with your words. Speak out what you want. Um, it's possible to be in the place that you guys want to. It's like, 
You can have everything you want. It starts by feeling it. Once you start feeling into that place, uh, it helps you to get there faster. So your words become your reality. Be kind to each other. Be kind to yourselves. Um, I love you guys. And thank you very, very, very much. All the classes are on Zoom. Someone said, where are they located? You can, you can watch from anywhere in the world, okay? So they are located where you are, <laughs> where in the room that you are. You're very welcome, Vincent. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you as well. Uh, Daria, you're very welcome. And yeah, let's see. Yeah, I agree, Amelia. There is a thin line between wanting a role the way Brian Cranston did and wanting it so much you seem desperate. So there's work that you need to do so you don't translate that desperation because it's, that's not an attractive thing when you come in, the, come in the room. So one of the neat things that I do with actors is we work on the same way we work on acting. They can choose to work on how am I bringing myself into the room? We're actually coaching an agent manager meeting that you have, or how am I bringing myself into a room? Um, it, it's really fun. So, so attention needs to be paid on that. And it's solved through impact and not effort as well. Beautiful. Thank you guys very, very much. I can't wait to connect with you guys next week. Uh, stay tuned because we're uh, gearing up for a regular, uh, regular schedule. And again, you guys, it's a pleasure and a privilege. Take great care of yourselves. And uh, look forward to seeing you guys um, next week or at one of the free audits. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.